Today we will be discussing how you can use the Tegela system uh, from R and more specifically how you can use uh, the Tegela system in CSC's title cluster. And here you can see the agenda for today's webinar. I will be starting with a short demo to show you how you can push computation from a local R session to a Tegela environment to accelerate the computations. And after that, I will give you a very brief introduction to the Tecula High Performance Computing Middleware System. And after that, I will uh, demonstrate how you can configure uh, the Tecula Software Development Kit so that you can connect to the Tecula environment running in CSC's title booster. And after that, we have time for questions and answers where I will try to answer any questions you have. But to start, as promised, I will show you a demo just to give you an idea on what I mean when I say that we can accelerate computations. So, this is an R Studio session running on this computer, so it's a local session. And on this computer, I have also installed a piece of software called uh, the Tecula Software Development Kit. And this Tecula software development kit contains all the necessary bits and pieces you need in order to connect uh, your computer to the Tecula environment. And the Tecula SDK contains an R bucket, and I have also installed that on this computer. So now I'm able to load the Tecula package using the standard library Tecula command. And this will give me access to the Tecula helper functions that are in this package. And one of those helper functions is this cloud core function, which can be used to replace computationally intensive for loop structures so that the iterations are executed in the Tecula environment instead of on your local computer. And in this case, we have two nested cloud core loops, as you see here. And during each iteration, these two lines of code will be executed. And I will not go into the technical details with this demo. I will just give you an idea on what it looks like when you are pushing computational workload from a computer to the tech line. So now I source the file, and now I have access to this run underscore Asian hardware function, which will push the computational workload to the demo environment I am using. So now uh, I ran the code and we see this uh, project status window. And in the demo environment I'm using, I have 40 CPU cores available. And the number 40 in the yellow arrow means me that there are 40 Tegila jobs being processed at the current time. And if I would have more jobs running, uh, sorry, more CPU cores running, I would be able to compute more jobs at the same time. But in this case, we are working with 40 CPU cores, so we get uh, at the value 40 here at the ORM. And the green area means uh, jobs that are completed. And whenever a job is completed in this example, it will be uh, streamed back to this computer and the result will be visualized in the graph you see here. And as we get more and more uh, co complete data points from the Tecula environment, the graph will be updated to match the result data. And now we are just waiting for the last uh, jobs to complete. And now the project has been completed, and I got the results straight back into this local R session. So I didn't need to work with any output files, or I didn't need to log in to any remote node. I was able to push the computations to the Tecula environment directly from this uh, local R session, and I got the results uh, straight back into the R workspace. And uh, this is the result data. So this is a 10 by 10 array. Uh, so this. In this case, we had a nested cloud core loop structure, and each uh, loop consisted of 10 points. So we actually calculated the values of a 10 by 10 matrix, which was visualized here. And this is the actual numerical result data that we got. And then we also get some project statistics about the project that we just computed. And probably the most important or interesting bits here are these two lines here. 
So the total CPU time used in this case was 34 minutes. And this means that uh, it, you, the technical system used 34 minutes of CPU time to process the computational workload in this project. And the workload time used tells us how many minutes and seconds it actually took to complete it. So in this case, we were able to do 34 minutes worth of computation in just over one minute. So that was the demo I promised. So that was me pushing computational workload to a Tequila environment from a local R session where I had the Tequila software kit installed. And next, uh, I'd like to give you a short introduction to the Tequila system. So I have a couple of PowerPoint slides. And after the PowerPoint slides, I will show how you can configure the Tequila SDK. So there are a lot of parameters in the uh, R so, scripts you see here, but I will uh, discuss those parameters in more detail later during this webinar. So, uh, to answer the question how Tequila actually speeds up the computations, hopefully the demo I did answered that question at least uh, somewhat. But just to reiterate, uh, Tequila speeds up the computation by dividing the computational problem into smaller parts, which we are then able to solve simultaneously on a large number of uh, CPU cores. So we are not just using fast computers. We are using lots of, lots of uh, CPU cores to process small parts of the problem at the same time. And then I have some guidelines, so to say, about what types of applications uh, are typically uh, well suited for Tequila, and maybe in this video competing in general also. And one of the most commonly encountered uh, situations or cases we have are these Monte Carlo type simulations where we rely on random number sampling to solve a problem. And these are typically very CPU intensive and don't rely on generating lots of output data or reading input data, meaning that they are very well suited for a distributed computing system such as Tequila. And another uh, example use case is, for example, if you have 100 different audio files and you want to analyze each of those audio files by using your as R script. This can also be very well, very easily done by using Tequila so we can specify the R script we want to use to analyze the input data files. Then we can send that script to the Tequila environment along with any input files we need in the analysis. And then of course if you have any case where you are doing parameter sweep type computations, Tequila is very well suited for those as well. But if you have a problem where you have strict recursive dependencies, such as when computing MCMC chains, then Tequila is not suited because of those dependencies. But then again, if you are working with MCMC chains, even though you cannot uh, divide that single MCMC chain into small independent parts, it's of course possible to run several of these MCMC chains uh, parallel in Tequila by, for example, using different seeds, which can be beneficial in some cases. And then I have an illustration of a Tequila environment and a small animation on what actually happens when you push computational workload into a Tequila environment. So in this graph, we have the three components that make up the Tequila environment. So we have the end user using R on their own computer, and they also have the Tequila SDK. And then we have the Tequila server and the Tequila workers. And the Tequila workers are the computers that provide the actual computational power that will be used to solve the computational problems. And the Tequila server will act as the communication endpoint between the Tequila environment and the end user. So whenever an end user wants to push computation workload to the Tequila environment, it's sent via the Tequila server, which then distributes it to the Tequila workers. So now I'm going to show you a small animation on what happens when uh, a user creates a computational project. So it starts by establishing a connection by using the Tequila SDK. Uh, this connection is uh, secured by using SSL, and it is also authenticated by your 
own personal user credentials. And after this network connection has been established, the end user has access to all of the computational capacity in the Tequila environment. And similarly, as between the Tequila server and the end user, these network connections are also secured using SSL. So now, when the end user wants to push computational workload to the Tequila environment, it's done by sending it to the Tequila server. And the Tequila server will then distribute the computational data packages to the Tequila workers. So these computational data packages include any R scripts that contain functions you want to execute, any possible input data files you want to send to the computational uh, nodes, um, pretty much anything you need during the call. It's sent from the Tequila server to the Tequila workers automatically. And after the Tequila workers have received all of the necessary components required to process the workload, they start processing it. And as a result, they will generate an output file, which will automatically be sent back to the Tequila server and then back to your computer. And this all happens automatically. So when I ran the demo project earlier, all of the activities I just described happened automatically under the hood, so to say. So data was sent from my computer to the Tequila server. The Tequila server distributed the necessary files to the Tequila workers, which then processed the workload and sent the results back to my computer. So that is a very uh, quick and dirty introduction to the Tequila system. And then I have some title-specific information about the Tequila system. So currently, uh, there are 36 title nodes that can be used for processing Tequila jobs. And each of these nodes can process 12 jobs at the same time, meaning that the system is capable of processing 360 jobs in total. And currently, there is no code limit per user. So if you are the only user using the Tequila system, you will get access to all of the cores. If there are multiple users using the system at the same time, the Tequila system will share the computation capacity so, so that each user will at, get at least some CPU power. And then, to answer the the question, how can you get Tequila access? Uh, CSC has written a nice set of instructions in the website you see here. So that page contains a getting started section that lists the steps that you need to do. And this page also contains a link that you can use to download the Tequila software development kit, uh, which is needed to connect to the Tequila environment. And I will show this page in the link uh, in just a couple of minutes when I show you how you can configure the Tequila SDK for the Tequila environment in CSC. And the Tequila SDK contains lots of useful material for getting started with using Tequila. So it uh, contains examples for several popular programming languages, including MATLAB, Python, and R. And there are quite thorough documents for these programming languages. So pretty much all of the information I'm talking and giving to you during this webinar can also be found in the documentation. And in the Tequila SDK, there is the Tequila R package. And the Tequila R package contains a couple of helper functions. And the first one I'd like to briefly discuss was the Cloud4 helper function I used during the demo. So this cloud for function can be used to replace uh, computationally intensive for loop structures so that the iterations are executed in the Tequila environment instead of on your own computer. And I have a couple of examples here that illustrate the local version by using a standard for structure and the cloud for equivalent version where the operations will be executed in a Tequila environment. So in this case, we have a local loop that has 10 iterations, where uh, we just multiply the value of the iteration counter by itself and store the result in the array. And the Tequila counterpart is quite similar. I'll just go through what each of these lines actually does. So we start by loading the Tequila library, which gives us access to the Cloud for Helper function. So after this line, we are ready to use the Cloud for Helper function. 
And when we want to use Cloud Core function, we want to define which variable will store the results. So in this case, we store the results returned by Cloud Core into the result variable. Then we define that we want to iterate over from 1 to 10 for the value i. And then we have this dot r version equals n. This is specific to the CSC tequila environment. And this is needed in order to use the R installation available on the title notes themselves. So this is something that is not included in the example material by default. But uh, you just need to make sure that you have this line here in every example that you try to run. Otherwise, you will run into somewhat uh, cryptic error messages. And I'll show you what the error message looks like when I do some demos in a couple of minutes. And so that's the first cloud for uh, syntax. So we define the range over which we want to evaluate the value i. And then we close it off. And then we have this person t notation. So this person t notation marks the start for the code block that we want to execute in the tequila environment. And in this case, we have this uh, multiplication operation i times i, which is the same operation that's executed in the local version uh, during each iteration. Uh, this is very trivial. And uh, in a real world use case, you wouldn't want to execute this in a tequila environment because it would be slower due to overheads related to distributed computing. But this is just to illustrate the uh, simplest possible case and conversion, how you can convert the local port loop structure to a cloud for loop structure. Uh, you can execute pretty much any function you want in this cloud for loop. So if you have functions that you have written yourself, you can use those there, no problem. And um, then the other example we have on this slide, we have a nested local for loop structure where we store the results in a matrix. And the technical counterpart uh, looks quite similar. So we again start by loading the Tegla library. And then we store, want to state that we want to store the results into the result variable. And then we have the two nested cloud for loops. And the outermost cloud for loop is uh, marked with this present TO notation. And then we have the innermost cloud for loop, which is marked with this present T notation. So this present TO notation tells the tequila packets that we have more cloud core statements coming. And these are used to mark uh, any outer cloud core loop structures. So you have, if you would have an additional cloud core loop structure here, you would define cloud core and then present TO for that as well. So only use present T for the innermost cloud core loop structure. And again, we have this R version equals N to make it run in time. So this is. Uh, the cloud core helper function. And the cloud core helper function automatically detects which uh, workspace variables and functions need to be transferred to the tequila environment. So if you are using some custom functions in this that you have written yourself and are dependent somewhere in the R script, the function dependency is detected automatically and transferred to the tequila worker. In, if you're working with uh, some packages, uh, those can be transferred by using a slightly different syntax. Uh, but uh, that is not uh, that difficult. So even if the functions you want to use are not included in the standard R distribution, you can use those as well. You just need to specify one additional parameter to make the Tecla system transfer the package from your computer to the Tecla And then Another helper function I'd like to mention is uh, called Peach. And Peach is the fruit, but it's also an acronym for Parallel Eats. And this Parallel Eats or Peach is a simple interface for executing computationally intensive functions on workers and typically with different input arguments. So essentially for parameter sweep type operations. And at Minimum, you want to define some parameters for the piece function that define what you want to execute. So the name of the function, you want to define input arguments for the executable function. And then you can also define, for example, a list of data files that you want to transfer to the tequila environment from your computer. 
And then you want to also define the number of jobs in the project. And I'll actually go through the syntax you see here, just to explain a bit uh, on what, the, what each of these lines do. Uh, so we are going to start by loading the Tegelo library, and then we set some values for local variables. And then we have the piece function call, and we define that we want to store the result of the piece function to the result variable. And then we have the actual piece function syntax. So from here all the way to here. And the function parameter defines the name of the function that will be executed in the job. So in this case, we have the work worker function here in quotes, meaning that each job will execute a, work, a function called worker function. And the params notation is used to define input arguments for the executable function. So with this syntax, the technical system will give two input arguments to the worker function each time it is executed in jobs. And the value of this var1 is set to 5 here, and it will be the same for each job in the project. And then we have a comma, and we have the second input parameter, which is this param notation. And this is a special notation in Tequila, and is used to implement the parameter suite type combinations. So this will be replaced with a different value for each job. In this example, the value of this will be 1 in job 1, 2 in job 2, and so forth. And then we have the files parameter, which is used to define a list of files that will be sourced at the start of the job. So in this case, we have the file underscore this dot r here, meaning that a file with this name will be sourced at the start of the job. So this file needs to be on your computer in the current working directory from where it will be sent to the Tequila environment and sourced at the start of the job. And this function would in this case also contain the definition for this worker function so that it can, can be called in the job. And then we have the piece vector parameter. Uh, this has two roles in the computation. The length of the piece vector defines the number of jobs in the project. And in this case, we have the value 10 here, meaning that the length of the vector will be 10, which in turn means that the number of jobs in the project will also be 10. And then the elements of the piece vector will also be used to replace the values of this param notation here. So in this case, we are working with integers, meaning that uh, it will be values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, for jobs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so forth. But you could also have different types of data structures here. So you, you are not just limited to integers. And then we have the parameter to define the R version. Uh, so it's set to n, which is again needed when running jobs on Titan Ops. And then we have this SDK root parameter, which is used to define the location of the Tequila folder on your computer. So that was the PowerPoint uh, part, pretty much. And now I will show some demos on how you can get started with getting access to the Tequila environment in CSC and how you can do the actual configuration so that we can run some simple test projects there. And the first thing you want to do when you need to get access is to check out this site that I mentioned earlier. Just minimize that. Also this. So this is the Tequila uh, information page on the CSC website. And here we see this uh, getting started section. So it has four different steps you need to do. The first thing is to register as a CSC customer. And after that, you can send an email to service desk at csc.fi and ask for Tequila credentials. And when they reply, they will include a attachment in the email which will be a file with a JKS suffix. So that is a Java key store file, which is password protected, and that contains your personal user credentials that are needed in order to use the Tegula environment in CSC. And after that, 
you can click this link here to download the Tequila SDK to your computer. And now I have done some of those steps already. So I have sent an, well, actually I got it by a slightly different route, but essentially I have a JKS file that is valid in the uh, Tequila environment in CSC. So I will now show you how you can configure the Tequila SDK and connect it to the Tequila environment in CSC. So here are the relevant uh, files in this case. So we have the Tequila SDK .zip, which is the Tequila software development kit in compressed form. And I have already extracted it. And when you extract it, you, it creates a folder structure with uh, several different folders, such as this Tequila, which is the root directory. And then we have some other relevant folders as well. So I have already downloaded and extracted it. You don't need, there is no installer per se. You don't need to install it as a program in Windows or Linux. It's a zip file. And then we will do some additional configuration so it works in the CSC environment. And then another relevant file here was this marco underscore csc.jks. So this file contains my personal user credentials for the tequila environment. And now I'm going to start the configuration. So I'm going to go to the tequila directory and I'm going to create a copy of this file. So this uh, tequila settings file. Copy and paste. And then I'm going to remove the template suffix. So the name is simply tequila underscore settings.in. Then I'm going to edit the file with the text editor. And there are a couple of lines you need to change. The first line is this line, which defines the network address of the Tekla server. And the second line is this key store line, which defines the location of the JKS file on your computer. So let's start by configuring the hosting, which is Tequila srv.csc.fi and then we are going to configure the location of the keystore file. And on this computer, it is located in on my desktop in a demo directory I created for this webinar. So I just uh, I'm going to copy the directory from here, paste it here. and add marco underscore csc dot jks. So that defines the location of the key store file. And that would work, uh, but there's also another way to do this. So when we are editing this file, we also have access to macros, which are these values in curly braces. And I'm going to show you how you can use this initier macro to configure the location. So I'm going to, this is, this is just my personal preference. I think it's easy to keep the JKS file in the same directory as the Tequila SDK is. So I'm going to copy this file. And then I'm going to go to the Tequila directory and paste it here. So it's in the same directory with this Tequila settings init file. And when they are located in the same directory, I can use a macro to point to the correct location there. So that's configuring the, the clusters in the file. So we need, just need to configure the network address and the location of the key store file. And then we need to do some uh, configuration in R. So we need to install uh, a couple of dependent packages and then we need to install the tequila package itself. So I'm just going to clear the environment a bit, so we get a nicer view. Okay, so the first package, the 
that we're going to install is our utils. And you don't need to remember all these packages uh, or what the names are. They are documented in the Tecla with R document that's included in the Tecla SDK. So uh, no need to try to remember or try to read it from this video. You can also check the document. So that's the first package installed. And then we need to install another package called rjava. So the, those are the third party packages that are needed. Then we need to install the tequila package, which is included in the tequila SDK. And the way you install the tequila package is you, first you need to set your current working directory to, to a directory under the tequila SDK. So I'm just going to go to my demo directory. So we are going to go to the root directory then to the lib directory, and then to the R directory, and select. And then we are going to install it. And the install command is quite lengthy, so I'm just going to copy-paste it from here. And you can do the same, you can copy-paste it from the document, but essentially we are installing it from the source files, and we are not using any repositories and we only want to install it for the R version we are currently using. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. Scroll up a bit so you can see better. Okay. That's a command. Just execute it. Okay. So that was the installation done. And now I can execute library the ELA to load the package. So now I have configured the Tequila settings ini file. So it points to the Tequila server in the CSC environment. And I also configured the location of my keystore file. Then I installed the required packages for R, which for R utils, R Java, and the Tequila package. And now I'm ready to try the installation and to verify everything works. And the way you can verify everything works is to run one of the examples in the Tequila SDK. So I'm just going to close this one. And I'm going to navigate to the examples directory in the Tequila SDK. So Tequila root directory, examples directory, R, and let's go platform, and number of jobs and select folder. So now we are in the correct folder and I'm going to just open the run underscore jobs. So whenever you see a source code, source code file that starts with run underscore, it means that it is the tequila version of the code. If you see a code that starts with local underscore, it means that it is a locally executable reference function which can use to compare the differences in the local version and the Tecla version of the code. So I'm going to open the Tecla version of the code. And in this case, uh, actually, I ran this earlier, so there is my modification. But this is the example as you would expect to see it when you open it yourself. So it starts by loading the Tecla library and then defining a function where we use the cloud core to execute a very simple arithmetic operation. So we are again multiplying the value i with itself. And as we are using the Tequila environment in CSC, we need to modify this example. So it has the R version parameter and set the value to E and V. Now we can save the file, and source it, and then I can run the code. So when, now I have this run underscore jobs function, which is this function you see here. And it needs one input argument, which is the value of loops. 
and the value loops will be used to define the range for uh, value i. So it will calculate iterations from 1 to the value of loops. And if I give the input argument 10, it will iterate over values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But it will do it in uh, 5 jobs. So it will not create 10 jobs, it will create uh, 5 jobs in this case. And the reason for this is that we are using one control pattern in report platform, which is used to define how many iterations we do in each job. So now we have this value 2 here, which means that we will do two iterations per job. And because we are doing 10 iterations in total, we will have a grand total of five jobs in the project when I run this. And now, uh, because I'm using the uh, Tequila environment in CSC and not my, not my demo environment, it is prompting for my key store password. So as I mentioned earlier, the JKS file is password protected. And when you receive your JKS file from the help desk, you will also receive your personal password. And as mentioned, this is a, your personal user credential. So it's not a good idea to share this with anyone because if you give them the JKS and the password, uh, they will get have similar access to the environment as uh, your account. So this is personal. So now I'm going to write in my password. Hit OK. And I probably did some configuration mistake. Let's see. So we get to do some debugging as I had a demo effect. So let's check it out. So it said error in init. And the actual error is init file key store file not found. So this error means that uh, it, it read the configuration file tequila underscore settings init, but it didn't find the key store file. And I immediately see at that I made a mistake when I entered the location. So this init here is replaced automatically with the location of this, uh, this file. But I forgot to remove this uh, tequila directory definition here, which means that it tries to find it from C users mark of desktop CSC webinar, tequila SDK, tequila, tequila, and then tequila sticks in it. So it's trying to find locate it from a different directory than it actually is. So I remove it, I hit save, I run the code again. And now it again prompts for my password. And now it connected to the environment, but it was uh, uh, quite quick, so I didn't get a chance to drag the status window to the correct window. But anyway, uh, I just try to run the again. Let's see if I can. Now it's quite quick. But these are now executed in the Tegila environment running in CSC. So uh, despite, uh, despite the one mistake I did, it was quite easy to configure. You just need to define the location of the key store file in the init file and tell the network address of the Tegila server. And after that, you need to install the required packages. And then you can modify one of the examples so that you add this R version parameter there. And then you can test it. And this is a very trivial test. It, it's not uh, in any means a good case example. It's just a, basically a smoke test to test that the system works. And in this case, we are multiplying the value of i times i. And actually, I just store it in some result to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to execute run underscore jobs. So this function and store it in variable res. Now it's uh, taking a bit longer. And um, now we can access the value of press to see that it has 10 elements. 
so values from 1 to 100, which correspond to the values if we would execute the 10 loops locally, where we multiply the value of the uh, for loop counter. And now just to do a smaller modification, let's modify the code a bit so it divides the value by 100. I will save it, and then I will solve the new file, so it executes the new code. And let's store it in res2, run jobs, then loops. And now we would expect to get uh, 10 elements as uh, results, but the value should be divided by 100. And as we are waiting for this, um, I'll just go through the other parameters as well. So the, each of these examples has this .sdk root parameter as well. And this defines the location of the tequila directory. And here, in the examples, we are using this dot dot notation to refer to the path, but you can also define the path directly there without using these dots. Uh, this just depend. The reason why we have this notation in the example material is that when we use this notation, you can extract your regular SDK anywhere, but because the folder structure is known, uh, it will still work. But if you, for example, extract your tequila SDK to the root of C drive, and you, your path to the tequila directory is C tequila, then you could just write the following value here. And it would work just as well. And now we got the results. And let's just check the values. And the values range from 0, 0.01 to 1, meaning that it executed the new code that we ran in the tequila environment. Uh, but uh, as you see, it took a quite a long time, and it was trivial computation in CSC's uh, data cluster. Uh, tequila is running on the same nodes as uh, the Swarm scheduler, and sometimes if there is a Swarm load on the nodes, the tequila jobs might take longer than expected to complete. And in this case, I think that was probably the cause, because the code is very trivial and doesn't require any computational time. But instead, I think uh, we just need, needed to make room for Swarm jobs that were processed on the same node. And then I think I'll just quickly show you the Tequila SDK a bit more. So when you extract the Tequila chip, so when you download it from the Tequila, sorry, CSC website, you will get this Tequila SDK chip. And when you extract it, you will get the folder structure you see here. So you will get the Tequila SDK root directory, which will contain these directories. And the doc directory contains lots of useful documentation, including a document named Tequila with R, which contains walkthroughs of all of the example material that is included in the Tequila SDK. And it also contains the configuration instructions to, you can use to install the required packages on your computer. And then, in addition to that the documentation folder, we have this examples directory, which has examples for several different programming languages, but in this case we can check out this R directory, which contains all of our R example material. And the Cloud4 folder contains example material where, that uses the Cloud4 helper function to push computational workload to the tequila environment. And then we have other folders, such as the tutorial and features folder, that use the peach helper function to push computational workload to the tequila environment. And the tutorial examples are very trivial. They are essentially similar computations as the one I, you see here, which is done for, with Cloudwork. They are just smoke tests that you can use to test that the system works. And then we have simple examples that show how you can pass input arguments for the executable function what syntax you need to use to transfer additional data files to the workers, and all that kind of uh, useful stuff. So let's just give you a quick glimpse of this R 
So let's go to the tutorial to check out the PEATS example material. And then let's look at how we can pass additional data files to the workers. And in this case, we have a couple of different R scripts. So we have run underscore data files. And as I mentioned, whenever you see a file which starts with run underscore, it means that that file contains the tequila enabled version of the code. And whenever you see a local underscore function, that's the locally executable version. So let's just look at what this looks like. Looks like so this is the local version. Uh, it just reads the file, data file.txt, and then performs some simple operations for that file. And then we can check out the Tecla version of this file, which is using Peach. And we again, there are a lot of comments, but the number of code lines is actually quite small. So we load the Tecla library. And uh, then for this example, the most important bit is this files sorry, data files parameter, which is used to transfer this file from this directory to the Tequila environment, where it will be copied to the same temporary working directory with all of the other files that are used in your computational project. But I think it's, um, it would be a too ambitious task to go through the Tequila examples all together. So we can, um, uh, I think I'll stop with the examples for now. And, but if you have any questions, just feel free to write them down and we can revisit this example or demo stuff later if need be. And um, next I'm just going to wrap up my uh, two slides that I would like to go through. So that was the Tequila configuration in CSC. So I showed you how you can configure your Tequila SDK to connect to the CSC Tequila environment and how you can request credentials that are needed to access it. And this was a very short webinar and there are there is lots of lots lots and lots of information I didn't get a chance to share with you, but I just listed some of the most relevant useful links here that you can use to get more information about the tequila system. So the first one is our website which contains all of our information. And uh, then we have a technology docs page there, which contains our uh, documentation. So you, the same documentation is included in the Tequila SDK, but you can just visit that link and you can download it from there as well. And we also have a forum available on our website. And if you have any questions, you can just also register there and ask away. And we also have a YouTube channel that contains uh, some useful uh, videos on that show you how you can use the Tegula system and configure it on your computer.